Welcome to my 100% free course on ISACA's Certified Information Security Manager, CISM CISM, Certification. This is one of the hottest certifications in the industry and is excellent for people who want to move to a leadership position in IT security. CISM will give you authority and credibility as a cybersecurity leader or manager. It also shows your ability to become a strategic enterprise security leader. Today I will cover Domain 2 so let's get started. Check out my video on Domain 1 if you have not already. Please like and subscribe to my channel and grow the cybersecurity industry together. Click on the bell button to be alerted to new content in my channel. Do also share with your friends and comment for compliments or improvement. Domain 2 comprises 20% of the overall CISM information security management areas. It comprises of two topics mainly which are Information Security Risk Assessment Information Security Risk Response The key thing to know inside out for this domain is risk management. How it works, why it's important and how to do it. Let's start. Before we start, let us take a step back and talk about risk management. We practice risk management literally every day of our lives. Every time you put on a seatbelt, you are practicing risk management. Every time you lock your doors at night, you are doing risk management. We are going to see how risk management functions within the context of risk management. Cybersecurity is a massive subject, and risk management is a skill which is impossible to ignore as you move up the ladder. Remember that top management's key objective is to balance company risk and company finance. Risk management is the cornerstone of any good information security program. Risk management represents time-proven methods and techniques used to identify risks, understand their probability of occurrence and potential on the organization, make decisions about those risks based on established decision criteria and measure key attributes of security and risk for long-term trending and reporting to executive management. In an ideal world, cybersecurity teams would have unlimited budgets and time. Unfortunately, that is not true. We have limited time, budget and resources. We want to make sure we spend that time and money on the stuff that matters. Understanding risk management will allow us to justify where the time and money will be spent and allocated. Risk management tells you where to spend your time and effort so that it is not wasted. Maximizing opportunity cost for the company. Therefore, risk management is the answer. You really cannot reach a senior position without learning if the board is not going to give you millions of dollars to spend if you cannot justify the spend. Learning risk management will be the most fundamental skill in cybersecurity. Similarly, audits might ask why you decided to focus on a particular area to fix and not some other. This is where risk management helps you in cybersecurity, so understanding the language of the business is important. An organization that implements an effective risk management program will have heightened awareness about the business use of technology and how that technology can impact the business. The greatest benefit that an organization will derive is a lower probability of security incidents, for incidents that do occur, the organization will be better prepared, and the impact of the incident will be reduced. This is not a choice in a regulated environment. No two risk management programs are alike, instead, each is uniquely different based on several factors, culture, mission, objectives, and goals management structure, management support, industry sector, market conditions, applicable laws, regulations, and other legal obligations, stated or unstated risk tolerance, financial health, operating locations. As a cybersecurity professional, you will need to justify the cost and effort of cybersecurity investments. Simply put there is too much happening in an IT environment. Do you patch those internet-facing servers first? Or review the firewall? Or implement a new cloud security solution? Maybe a new anti-malware solution? Risk management is how you decide on a roadmap for the next 12 months. An organization that implements an effective risk management program will have heightened awareness about the business use of technology and how that technology can impact the business. 
The greatest benefit that an organization will derive is a lower probability of security incidents, for incidents that do occur, the organization will be better prepared, and the impact of the incident will be reduced. So, what is risk management? In a nutshell, this is the industry definition. Cybersecurity risk management is the process of identifying, assessing and controlling threats to an organization's technology environment. In simpler terms, it is a structured way to determine the critical risks to your environment and what needs to be done to fix them. Not really a choice in today's highly regulated environments. Standards like PCI, DSS, ISO and literally every other standard mandate it. It is also simply good practice to do it, so do remember to understand more about these standards. The acceptable level of risk is generally related to those factors, executive management's risk appetite, so management's risk appetite is important. The organization's ability to absorb losses, as well as its ability to build defenses. Regulatory and legal requirements. As the organizational establishes its acceptable level of risk, also known as risk tolerance, this will drive the implementation and refinement of controls. Then, over time, risk assessments and risk treatment will cause adjustments to its controls. This is because controls are the primary means for mitigating risks by ensuring desired outcomes, whatever they may be. Several internal and external factors will govern the implementation of risk management objectives, including the following, culture, organizational maturity, management structure, management support, market conditions, regulatory and legal requirements. No need to reinvent the wheel. Adopt any best practice standard and use that to build a risk management framework. Choosing the best practice framework will set the basic for anyone. And therefore, we do not need to start from scratch, and, this is key as cybersecurity can be required on an immediate basis. This will ensure results of risk assessments are consistent and do not change from department to department. ISO, IEC 27001, Information Technology, Security Techniques, Information Security Management Systems, Requirements, Especially Requirements 4 through 10 which describe the structure of an entire information security management system, ISMS, including risk management. ISO, IEC 27005, Information Technology, Security Techniques, Information Security Risk Management. ISO, IEC 31010, Risk Management, Risk Assessment Techniques. NIST Special Publication 837, Guide for Applying the Risk Management Framework to Federal Information Systems, a Security Lifecycle Approach. NIST SP 839, Managing Information Security Risk. COBIT 2019, Control Objectives for Information and Related Technology, Framework, Framework Components, Risk Management Frameworks have a common core of components including the following, program scope, information risk objectives, information risk policy, risk appetite, tolerance, roles and responsibilities, risk management lifecycle process, risk management documentation, management review. The three levels of risk management. Modern risk management encounters a broad assortment of issues, ranging from corporate culture to the misconfiguration of individual servers. Conceptually, these issues are handled in the same way, with risk identification, analysis, treatment, and closure, but the personnel involved will often vary, and the deliberations will sound quite different. Risk management is best divided into three tiers, enterprise level, risks at this level are generally associated with organization culture and management's adequate support of cybersecurity capabilities. Risks at this level are conceptual and often reported to a board of directors. The practice of risk management at this level is known as Enterprise Risk Management, or ERM. An organization's ERM will often include cybersecurity risks and risks related to competition, market share, economics, workforce matters, and more. Process Level Risks Risks at this level are usually associated with the effectiveness of business processes which affect cybersecurity posture. 
Issues at this level typically involve security policies, standards, process design, workflow, and workload. Asset level risks. Risks at this level are associated with individual systems or small groups of systems. Generally, asset level risks involve configuration and small scale architecture. The analysis is focused on technical vulnerabilities and threats, and remediation is usually tactical. Risks at one tier sometimes inform adjacent tiers. For instance, a surge in asset level threats may indicate defects in process level risks or even a shift in workforce priorities. Similarly, the presence of multiple process level risks may be an indication of macro issues that should be addressed at the enterprise level. Like other life cycle processes, risk management is a cyclical, iterative activity used to acquire, analyze, and treat risks. The risk management process consists of a set of structured activities that enable an organization to manage risk systematically. Like other business processes, risk management processes vary somewhat from one organization to the next, but generally, they consist of the following activities. Scope Definition The organization defines the scope of the risk management process itself. Typically, Scope definitions include geographical or business unit parameters. Scope definition is not part of the iterative portion of the risk management process, although scope may be redefined from time to time. Asset identification and valuation. The organization uses various means to discover and track its information and information system assets. A classification scheme may be used to identify risk and criticality levels. Asset valuation is a key part of asset management processes, and the value of assets is appropriated for use in the risk management processes. Asset valuation is described in detail in Chapter 5. Risk Appetite Developed outside of the risk management lifecycle process, risk appetite is an expression of the level of risk that an organization is willing to accept. A risk appetite that is related to information risk is typically expressed in qualitative means. However, organizations in financial services industries often express risk in quantitative terms. Risk identification. In this first step in the iterative risk management process, the organization identifies a risk that comes from one of several sources, including the following. Risk assessment. This includes an overall risk assessment or a focused risk assessment. Vulnerability assessment. This may be one of several activities, including a security scan, a penetration test, or a source code scan. Threat advisory. This is an advisory from a product vendor, threat intelligence feed, or news story. Risk analysis. This is an analysis of risk that is focused on some other matter that may uncover additional risks requiring attention. Risk Analysis In the second step in a typical risk management process, the risk is analyzed to determine several characteristics, including the following. Probability of event occurrence The risk analyst studies event scenarios and calculates the likelihood that an event associated with the risk will occur. This is typically expressed in the number of likely events per year. Impact of event occurrence. The risk analyst studies different event scenarios and determines the impact of each. This may be expressed in quantitative terms, dollars or other currency, or qualitative terms, high slash medium slash low or a numeric scale of 1 to 5 or of 1 to 10. Mitigation. The risk analyst studies different available methods for mitigating the risk. Depending upon the type of risk, there are many techniques, including changing a process or a procedure, training staff, changing architecture or configuration, or applying a security patch. Recommendation After studying a risk, the risk analyst may develop a recommended course of action to address the risk. This reflects the fact that the individual performing risk analysis is often not the risk decision maker. Risk Treatment in the last step in a typical risk management process, an individual decision maker or committee makes a decision about a specific risk. The basic options for risk treatment are as follows. Accept. The organization elects to take no action related to the risk. Mitigate. The organization chooses to mitigate the risk, 
which can take the form of some action that serves to reduce the probability of a risk event or reduce the impact of a risk event. The actual steps taken may include business process changes, configuration changes, the enactment of a new control, or staff training. Transfer The practice of transferring risk is typically achieved through an insurance policy, although other forms are available, including contract assignment. Avoid The organization chooses to discontinue the activity associated with the risk. This choice is typically selected for an outdated business activity that is no longer profitable or for a business activity that was not formally approved in the first place. Risk Communication This takes many forms, including formal communications within risk management processes and procedures, as well as information communications among risk managers and decision makers. In addition to business processes, a risk management process has business records associated with it. The risk register, sometimes known as a risk ledger, is the primary business record in most risk management programs that list risks that have been identified. Typically, a risk register contains many items, including a description of the risk, the level and type of risk, and information about risk treatment decisions. What are the things that could happen to the asset? A. DDoS attack, malware, or even someone accidentally deleting a file is a threat. All realistic threat scenarios are examined for each asset to determine which are most likely to occur. Sometimes, a threat can be wrongly identified by the cybersecurity analyst. This can be considered a false positive and result in a waste of resources to identify and rectify the issue. Threat Actors the risk manager must understand the variety of threat actors and know which ones are more motivated to target the organization and for what reasons. This further illuminates the likelihood that a given threat scenario will occur. How does an attacker come into your environment? A server is your asset. Attacker is the threat. A missing patch then would be your vulnerability. Vulnerabilities usually take one of those forms. Configuration fault. A system program, or component may have one or more incorrectly set configuration settings that could provide an attacker with opportunities to compromise a system. For example, the authentication settings on a system may enable an attacker to employ a brute force password guessing attack that will not be stopped by target user accounts being automatically locked out after a small number of unsuccessful login attempts. Design Fault the relationships between components of a system may be arranged in such a way that makes it easier for an attacker to compromise a target system. For instance, an organization may have placed a database server in its DMC network instead of in its internal network, making it easier for an attacker to identify and attack. Known Unpatched Weakness a system may have one or more vulnerabilities for which security patches are available but not yet installed. For example, a secure communications protocol may have a flaw in the way that an encrypted session is established, which could permit an attacker to easily take over an established communications session. There may be a security patch available for the security flaw, but until the security patch is installed, the flaw exists and may be exploited by any individual who understands the vulnerability and available techniques to exploit it. Sometimes, Known weaknesses are made public through disclosure by the system's manufacturer or a responsible third party. Even if a patch is unavailable, other avenues may be available to mitigate the vulnerability, such as a configuration change in the target system. Undisclosed Unpatched Weakness A system may have unpublicized vulnerabilities that are known only to the system's manufacturer. Until an organization using one of these systems learns of the vulnerability via a security bulletin or a news article, the organization can do little to defend itself short of employing essential security techniques such as system hardening, network hardening, and secure coding. Undiscovered Weakness Security managers have long accepted that all kinds of information systems have security vulnerabilities yet to be discovered, disclosed, and mitigated. New techniques for attacking systems are constantly being developed, and some of these techniques can exploit weaknesses no one knew to look for. As new techniques have been discovered that involve examining active memory for snippets of sensitive information, 
system and tool designers can design defense techniques for detecting and even blocking attacks. For example, techniques were developed that would permit an attacker to harvest credit card numbers from PCI compliant point of sale software programs. Soon, effective attacks were developed that enabled cyber criminal organizations to steal tens of millions of credit card numbers from global retail companies. Vulnerabilities exist everywhere. In software programs, database management systems, operating systems, virtualization platforms, business processes, encryption algorithms, and personnel. As a rule, security managers should consider that every component of every type in every system has both known and unknown vulnerabilities, some of which, if exploited, could result in painful and expensive consequences for the organization. Asset Value The value of each asset is an important factor to include in risk analysis. As described earlier, assets may be valued in several ways. For instance, a customer database may have a modest recovery cost if it is damaged or destroyed. However, if that same customer database is stolen and sold on the black market, the value of the data may be much higher for cyber criminals, and the resulting costs to the organization to mitigate the harm done to customers may be higher still. Other ways to examine asset value is through the revenue derived from the asset's existence or use. What happens if your business is down for a day? If your email system stops working? If your credit card database is breached? Think of the financial and non-financial impact. This can be fines, reputation, media coverage, the cost to build back a system etc. How would you arrive at a likely or not likely probability of a threat happening? First, we need to know the chances of threats happening. Do remember that it does not have to be guessing work. Lots of stuff you can use. Incident reports. Audit reports. Industry reports. Threat intel. Previous security alerts. This is the critical definition we need to remember. Risk is the probability of a threat exploiting a vulnerability and causing an impact. Two types qualitative and quantitative. In qualitative risk analysis, where probability and impact are rated on simple numeric scales, a risk matrix is sometimes used to portray levels of risk based on probability and impact. The risk matrix shown here is an example most risk analysis begins with qualitative risk analysis, a rating technique that does not seek to identify exact, or even approximate, asset value or impact or the exact probability of occurrence. Risk items are expressed in levels such as high, medium, and low. The purpose of qualitative risk analysis is to understand each risk relative to other risks so that higher risks could be distinguished from lower risks. This system enables the organization to focus on risks that are more critical, based on impact in qualitative terms. Semi-quantitative risk analysis In semi-quantitative risk analysis, the probability of occurrence and impact can be expressed as a numeric value in the range 1 to 5, where 5 is the highest probability, for example. Then, for each asset and for each threat, Risk can be calculated as probability times impact. For example, suppose an organization has identified two risk scenarios. The first is a risk of data theft from a customer database. The impact is scored as a 5, highest, and probability is scored as a 4, highly likely. The risk is scored as 5 times 4 equals 20. The second is a risk of theft of application source code. The impact is scored as a 2, low and probability is scored as a 2, less likely. This risk is scored as 2 times 2 equals 4. This system helps the security manager understand that the data theft risk is a larger risk, scored as 20, compared to the source code theft risk, scored as 4. These risk scores do not imply that the larger risk is 5 times as likely to occur, nor do they imply that protecting against the larger risk is 5 times as expensive. The scores are used to determine only that one risk is larger than another. In quantitative risk analysis, risk managers attempt to determine the actual costs and probabilities of events. 
this technique provides more specific information to executives about the actual costs that they can expect to incur in various security event scenarios. There are two aspects of quantitative risk analysis that prove to be a continuing challenge. Event probability. It is difficult to come up with even an order of magnitude estimate on the probability of nearly every event scenario. Even with better information coming from industry sources, the probability of high-impact incidents is dependent upon many factors, some of which are difficult to quantify. Event cost. It is difficult to put an exact cost on any given security incident scenario. Security incidents are complex events that involve many parties and have unpredictable short and long term outcomes. Despite improving information from research organizations on the cost of breaches, these are still rough estimates and may not take into account all aspects of cost. Because of these challenges, quantitative risk analysis should be regarded as an effort to develop estimates, not exact figures. In part, this is because risk analysis is a measure of events that may occur, not a measure of events that do occur. Standard quantitative risk analysis involves the development of several figures. Asset value, of E. The value of the asset is usually, but not necessarily, the asset's replacement value. Depending on the type of asset, different values may need to be considered. Exposure factor, EF. The financial loss that results from the realization of a threat is expressed as a percentage of the asset's total value. Most threats do not completely eliminate the asset's value, instead, they reduce its value. For example, if an organization's $120,000 server is rendered unbootable because of malware, the server will still have salvage value, even if that is only 10% of the asset's actual value. In this case, the EF would be 90%. Note that different threats have different impacts on EF, because the realization of various threats will cause varying amounts of damage to assets. Single Loss Expectancy SLE. This value represents the financial loss when a threat scenario occurs one time. SLE is defined as AV times EF. Note that different threats have a varied impact on EF, so those threats will also have the same multiplicative effect on SLE. Annualized Rate of Occurrence ARO. This is an estimate of the number of times that a threat will occur per year. If the probability of the threat is 1 in 50, one occurrence every 50 years, ARO is expressed as 0.02. However, if the threat is estimated to occur four times per year, then ARO is 4.0. Like EF and SLE, ARO will vary by threat. Annualized Loss Expectancy of LE. This is the expected annualized loss of asset value due to threat realization. ALE is defined as SLE times ARO. ALE is based upon the verifiable values AV, EF, and SLE. But because ARO is only an estimate, ALE is only as good as ARO. Depending upon the value of the asset, the risk manager may need to take extra care to develop the best possible estimate for ARO, based on whatever data is available. Sources for estimates include the following. Now that you know the risk, what are you going to do about it? Do you reduce the risk? Implement DDoS controls, anti-malware solution. Accept the risk? Cost is too much. Management signs off on it and accept that this might happen. Transfer. Cyber insurance is a major thing now. You can insure against this risk happening. Avoid the risk altogether. Maybe your business decides that a particular application is not worth and simply scrap it altogether. Rare but it happens. The aspect of risk treatment of utmost importance to the ongoing success of an organization's security management program is who makes the risk treatment decisions. Security Manager This person may be the most knowledgeable about risk, but this is not the best choice. A security manager who makes risk treatment decisions runs the risk of others in the organization not supporting those decisions. Security Steering Committee a consensus decision is often the best choice, because stakeholders and others provide input and contribute to a decision. When stakeholders have a say in risk matters, they're more likely to support decisions affecting them.
owner. This may be a business process owner, business unit leader, or other senior executive whose process or system is the nexus of any particular risk. Undefined. An organization that does not define who makes risk treatment decisions is, by definition, not running an effective security management program. In many organizations, consensus decisions are made by a combination of these parties. Residual risk. Risk treatment rarely eliminates all risk. Instead, risk treatment will reduce the probability and or the impact of a specific threat. The leftover, or residual, risk should be entered into the risk register for its own round of risk treatment. Depending upon the nature of the original risk, an individual risk may undergo two or more cycles of risk treatment, until finally, the residual risk is accepted and the risk matter closed. A risk register is a business record that contains information about business risks and information about their origin, potential impact, affected assets, probability of occurrence, and treatment. A risk register is the central business record in an organization's risk management program. Together with other records, the risk register serves as the focal point of evidence that an organization is at least attempting to manage risk. Other records include evidence of risk treatment decisions and approvals, tracking of projects linked to risks, and risk assessments and other activities that contribute content to the risk register. A risk register can be stored in a spreadsheet, database, or within a governance, risk, and compliance tool used to manage risk and other activities in the security program. Typical elements in a risk register include these groupings and details. Risk identification. Information about the introduction of the risk into the risk register, including a unique ID designation, the date of discovery, how it was discovered, and by whom. Risk description. Information about the risk itself, including relevant threats, vulnerabilities, and consequences. Affected assets. Information about assets or asset groups and the organization that are affected by the risk, as well as the business owners of those assets. Risk score. Information about the probability and impact of threat occurrence expressed in qualitative terms and possibly quantitative terms. Risk treatment analysis. Information about the potential impact of the various risk treatment options. Risk treatment. Information about risk treatment approved by the organization, including the person, group, or asset owner that made the risk treatment decision, the day that the decision was made, and the person or group responsible for carrying out the risk treatment. Risk management does not operate in a vacuum. Usually it is part of a complete cybersecurity program. Let us look at the steps and how it works. This is a key part that gets missed out a lot. First and most crucial step, make sure you have an executive sponsor like the CISO or the CEO or the CRO who is driving and taking ownership of cybersecurity risk management. Otherwise, teams will perceive this as an audit or a nuisance and you will not get the support. Only with management support then you will be able to get the info you need. Make sure it comes from the top. This should be easy for you by now. Follow the steps we discussed in the earlier phase and identify the key risks. Then use all the concepts we have learned earlier on. One of the easiest ways to find risks is to ask the assets owner. If they realize you are there to help them secure their systems, they will happily give you lots of useful information. Now that you have a list of risks, this is where we think about fixing them. Knowing how to fix these issues. Cybersecurity risks that are of a medium to high rating usually do require fixing. Remember we need to mitigate any issue if possible. What types of controls will you implement? Technical like MFA, logging, anti-malware, or maybe policy controls like awareness, usage policies etc. As a professional, you will need to come into work on this. The output of the entire exercise will be a cybersecurity roadmap with goals and timelines. Because, you will not be able to fix everything without any planning. Break the roadmap into tactical and long-term goals, this is any project manager will do it. The fix must be planned into immediate, within a month or we need six months to fix it. 
The solutions and cost that are in this roadmap are all justified thanks to the risk exercise you did and can easily be shown to management or audits if they ask, creating a roadmap is important. CISOs use this to show that every cost and effort has a thought process behind it. Management sponsors want to know their money is not being wasted, so be ready to know that which risk is being mitigated. Give regular feedbacks to your management team, CEO on what the status of the risks are, this will give them the overview understanding and benefits. You can use KPIs, metrics like number of risks closed, risk aging, how much budget has been used etc. Report it monthly or quarterly. If you are working in a tech company with many applications then you will come across a type of cybersecurity risk assessment backslash referred to as a threat model. Threat modeling is used in technology companies to identify risks in modern applications. It basically breaks down an app into multiple components and uses diagrams to find out the possible threats that can happen. Modern applications are quite complex consisting of multiple moving parts and threat modeling helps to simplify risk assessment for applications. Threat modeling is the process of using hypothetical scenarios, system diagrams, and testing to help secure systems and data. By identifying vulnerabilities, helping with risk assessment, and suggesting corrective action, threat modeling helps improve cybersecurity and trust in key business systems tailored them towards your company's technology and applications. As organizations become more digital and cloud-based, IT systems face increased risk and vulnerability. Growing use of mobile and Internet of Things IoT, devices also expand the threat landscape. This allows us to create diagrams to visualize how the application works and the threats within it. The process of threat modeling can provide an enhanced view of systems. The steps involved in threat modeling creating data flow diagrams, DFDs, and graphical representations of attack paths, as well as prioritizing assets and risks help IT teams gain a deeper understanding of network security and architecture. Help enable better collaboration on security. Proper threat modeling requires input from many stakeholders. Participating in the process can help instill cybersecurity consciousness as a core competency for all participants. Basic threat modeling can be performed in a brainstorming session and no special software is needed. SDRIDE stride stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service and elevation of privilege. This is the oldest threat modeling methodology and helps identify mitigating techniques. It is relatively easy to use but can be time-consuming. It focuses on the key threats in the table, read them out, and categories all the risks within them only. Another methodology is PAST APOSTA. It is an acronym that stands for Process for Attack Simulation and Threat Analysis. It is a seven-step risk-based threat modeling framework. It can cover more scenarios than stride and even non-technical threats like bad PR. There are seven stages to PAST which are, read them out. I hope this was a good overview for you for the key concepts of domain 2. It is essential to know risk management inside out for this domain and understand how risk management works. Risk management is an art which is essential for the success of any cybersecurity risk management program and comprises 20% which is quite a large part. I suggest going over this domain multiple times to make the concepts clear in your mind. Now, to help in growing the cybersecurity community, please like and subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell button to be alerted to new content in my channel. Do also share with your friends and comment for compliments or improvement.